That was a love letter to myself in the form of a online scammer. People watching YouTube, welcome to Jesse's vlog 16. I don't know if you noticed, but two weeks ago I posted a short film. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I'll make the links easy to find if I can. I'll figure it out. This one, Bookworm, was one that I shot with one of my BFFs back in November. Shot with a, an extremely small crew of people. And I just got busy and it sort of fell to the side while I got distracted with a bunch of stuff, but then I just took some time to finally finish it and get it out there. And it's eerily topical, uh, which is kind of funny. For me, shooting a short film or shooting any sort of creative work on the side is really important to develop yourself, to try weird stuff without a client looking over your shoulder. My goals with shooting something is to always have purpose behind it. And what that gets back to is always the idea. What is the idea? Because you can just pick up a camera and go out and shoot stuff and sure you might find beautiful things, but if it's not serving some sort of purpose, there's no reason for anybody to watch it. There's no reason for it to hold someone's attention other than the fact that it maybe looks pretty, but just like sugar, you get sick of it very quickly. The thing that makes something compelling to watch is the idea, the story, and it's not hard to put something in there. Whenever I've tried to shoot something, every camera test I've shot in the past has always been like a little scene or a little story or something complete that someone could watch start to finish and hopefully enjoy. The best part is ideas are free. If you're picking up your camera and you're going outside to shoot something, to test out a new piece of gear, you're investing your time into doing that. Say it takes three hours to shoot that. Why would you not take an extra 15 minutes before you head out to just put your phone on do not disturb, lay on the couch. It's an excuse to lay on the couch within like 10 minutes. And this is the only secret that I have to filmmaking that will get you the furthest. It's not about a certain way to walk while you're filming. It's not a certain position of the sun or whatever. All of that falls into place after you have an idea. In this case, I knew I wanted to shoot dialogue. It's terrifying to shoot dialogue, to put a light right on someone's face. It's easy to shoot someone backlit at magic hour, just wandering around. But to put a light on someone's face and ask them to deliver lines, to me that's terrifying because you're completely exposed. Every sort of inadequacy reveal themselves really quickly. Goals for this were shooting dialogue, shooting something that doesn't have another dude in it, lighting stuff myself. The other thing I wanted to do was to try a little bit of VFX. The last scene I did in After Effects, I tracked some 3D objects and other comp stuff. And it was just a bit of exercise to like get something semi, semi good. <laughs> and the other thing is production design. You know, it's what are all the details that can work together? I shot it with one of my best friends, Chris. He's one of the best designers in Canada. Uh, I'll link to his website. He's super detail-oriented, hands-on like myself, which is great because he made the little phone that's in the, in the movie. He can pick up a lot of the slack and the little details, the stuff that you just don't, your brain doesn't have the time to focus on. My detail director. I talked to Rebecca, who was our talent in this, about shooting something because I knew I wanted to shoot with a woman and I knew I wanted to practice dialogue. And so she's someone I trust and thought could make something happen. So when I wrote the script, I immediately knew that the quietness in the story, I can't have a handheld camera or all these dramatic moves because the story is so quiet and static and nothing is changing. If you just have no idea, then you're like, oh, let's bring a gimbal, let's bring a drone and all this weird stuff. When it's like, wait a minute, that doesn't suit this at all. Well, what I did know that the story suited is it needed like a seven foot dolly move. And so all of a sudden the story reveals what it needs to be told the best. I don't have dolly track. I don't have seven foot slider. I've worked on a lot of commercials with big dollies and you know, the camera operators sitting on a nice big dolly and, and it's, all, it's all beautiful and heavy and you've got crew to shim up all the track and stuff. So I took these random scraps of angle iron and I made one and I did it in my garage. Look at these zip ties. See this angle iron here, which just wheels bolted to it? This is all it is. Zip tied onto a piece of plywood. You may be asking yourself, why are there two angle irons? Well, because I had originally 
made this dolly with regular skateboard wheels and regular skateboard wheels if you can just like imagine in your head what a skateboard sounds like going down the pavement the wheels are actually really really hard so any like imperfection in your track the dolly just bounces like crazy so what i ended up doing is ordering these longboard wheels and they work amazing they're very soft rubber the problem with them is if you look here they're higher than the angle irons when i put them right against the plywood would, they would rub against the platform. So I just grabbed my extra angle iron. It's not even fastened in there in any way. It's just zip tied around the platform. If you see any behind the scenes with rigging on cars or a weird platform, it's all done with speed rail. And this one's really dirty because it's scaffolding I found on the farm. So I just took the steel wool and smoothed it out. And between that and the soft rubber skateboard wheels, it works great. So I ended up getting some Mayfer clamps and just screwed them on a two by four. I Googled the gauge of a Dana dolly, the distance between the center of the tracks, 11 and three quarter inches, just under a foot. It's just a two by four. So it's something that I made in my garage, saved myself a thousand dollars, all because I knew I needed a shot. And that's what I love about letting an idea lead because that means that all of your technical details have like a very specific reason for existing. And it serves the shot, it serves a part of the story. I needed it. Hope this was informative. I don't know. Who knows? Nobody knows. I don't know. If it is, tell me. If it isn't, don't tell me because I will cry myself to sleep. Again.